Hello viewers, thanks for joining us on today's discussion on syphilis. If you've ever heard of the Tuskegee study of untreated syphilis conducted between 1932 and 1972 by the United States Public Health Service on some African American men who were not aware at the time that they were being experimented on, then you already have an idea of just how debilitating syphilis could be if left undiagnosed and untreated. But did you know that syphilis has different stages, each with its own set of symptoms? Well, in this video we'll be covering the different stages of syphilis, its symptoms, treatment options, and preventive measures. Without further ado, let's dive right into the topic. Syphilis is caused by a bacterium called Treponema pallidum, and can lead to serious health complications if left untreated. Syphilis develops in four different stages, namely the primary, secondary, latent, and tertiary stages. At the primary stage, a sore called chancre develops at the original site of infection, typically the genitals, anus, or mouth. This sore is the primary symptom of syphilis, and it usually appears within the first few weeks after infection. Chancres are usually firm and painless, but they can sometimes be open and wet. Syphilis is highly contagious at this stage because of the presence of chancres, which contain infectious fluid. If primary syphilis goes undiagnosed and untreated, it progresses to the secondary stage, where additional symptoms may emerge. These can include a rash on the palms, the soles of the feet, or the scalp, fever, sore throat, fatigue, headache, weight loss, swollen lymph nodes, patchy hair loss, eye problems, dizziness, hearing problems, muscle ache, and syphilitic meningitis. It's important to note that some of these symptoms can come and go, leading to periods of temporary or false recovery. After the secondary stage, syphilis enters a latent stage where no visible symptoms can be observed for years or even decades. However, the infection persists in the body. It should be noted that despite the lack of visible symptoms, syphilis remains transmissible at the early latent stage, which usually lasts for about a year. By and large, syphilis is not contagious in the late latent stage. However, pregnant women can still transmit the infection to the fetus during this period. If syphilis remains untreated after about 10 to 30 years of latency, it can progress to the tertiary stage where severe complications can occur. These complications include neurosyphilis, cardiovascular syphilis, and gummatous syphilis. The symptoms of neurosyphilis can appear at any stage of syphilis infection, and it affects the central nervous system. Neurosyphilis can lead to neurological symptoms such as sensory deficits, paralysis, and dementia. On the other hand, cardiovascular syphilis affects the heart and the blood vessels, potentially resulting in life-threatening conditions such as aortic aneurysms and heart valve disease. Lastly, Gummatous syphilis can affect different organs in the body, leading to the formation of soft, non-cancerous growths called gummas. These growths may appear in various organs or tissues, including the skin, bones, liver, and brain. Now that you're familiar with the symptoms of syphilis, it's time to explore the various means of detecting and diagnosing the infection. The most common diagnostic tests for syphilis include blood tests such as treponemal tests and non-treponemal tests. Treponemal tests such as enzyme immunoassay and chemiluminescent immunoassay detect antibodies produced by the body specifically in response to syphilis bacterial proteins. On the other hand, non-treponemal tests like venereal disease research laboratory or rapid plasma regan detect antibodies that react or binds to the antigens released by the syphilis bacteria or the damaged host cells. These tests are effective in diagnosing syphilis and determining the stage of the infection. Additional diagnostic tests for syphilis include lumbar puncture, dark field microscopy, and polymerase chain reaction. A lumbar puncture is conducted if neurosyphilis is suspected. This test involves obtaining a sample of the cerebrospinal fluid to detect or confirm the presence of the syphilis bacteria in the central nervous system. The dark field test involves using a microscope to directly visualize the syphilis bacteria by examining fluid collected from a chancre or a rash while the PCR testing is conducted to detect the DNA of the syphilis bacteria. We'll now go over to our second studio where Sarah is waiting to enlighten us on ways of treating and preventing syphilis. When it comes to treating syphilis, penicillin is the primary and the most effective treatment for all stages of syphilis. Depending on the stage of the infection, a single injection may be sufficient for individuals who have been infected for less than a year while additional doses as recommended by a healthcare provider may be required for those who have had the infection for more than a year. Among all the available penicillins, benzathine benzyl penicillin is the most preferred choice. 
A single injection of this long-acting penicillin antibiotic can cure the primary, secondary, and early latent syphilis. Additional doses of the drug is required to treat late-latent syphilis. The recommended dosage by the CDC for late-latent syphilis or latent syphilis of unknown duration is three doses at weekly intervals. In cases of penicillin allergy or unavailability, alternative antibiotics such as doxycycline, tetracycline, or ceftriaxone may be prescribed by a healthcare provider. However, it's important to note that doxycycline should not be administered to pregnant women. Ultimately, prevention is the best cure for syphilis. Some preventive measures you can take to reduce the risk of being infected with syphilis include practicing safe sex by using condoms consistently and correctly during sexual activity, having a mutually monogamous relationship with a partner who has tested negative for syphilis and other sexually transmitted infections, having an open communication about your sexual health with your partner, and last but not the least, undergoing regular testing for syphilis and other STIs if you're sexually active so as to reduce the risk of transmission and facilitate early detection and treatment. Remember, if you are diagnosed with syphilis, it's important to notify your sexual partner or partners and encourage them to get tested. This is to ensure that they receive appropriate treatment and prevent further transmission. That will be all for today's video. Thanks for watching.